Okay, we're almost into game three. Just a few short seconds. Interested to see what the map was, because I haven't been informed out in the lobby. This is looking like a desert Arabia, isn't it? Oh, and there we go. Team 1v1. Want to die. <laughs> You know, like like I've been talking about, um, even if it is basically giving Tyrant a home map pick, they just want to play to their strengths. These guys are, I don't, well, I think River could, could be considered more of an FR player, I think. I think I'm right in saying that, but the other guys that we saw, Sebdos, who's now dropped out, Kongan's Gade, and Spring, they're all 1v1 Hunts Arabia players, so they're just playing to their strengths. And now they've picked civilizations that they will be a bit more familiar with. Um, and we have a pause right on four minutes, which is indicative of a restart to me. I have to see. Gonna run it a bit faster and see if we actually. I do have a restart on my hands, I'll just check the lobby. Yeah, they didn't come back to the lobby, so I think it's fine. I'm gonna slow it down. Uh, yeah, let's check the civilizations. I was just saying they've got Pixiv, so Spring can play Hans, and Kongan's Gade, if he's on the flank, can play. Maybe he wants to. He might choose to play that Mongols a bit, almost like a 1v1 Hans. You can kind of do the Scouts Archer thing if you're Mongols. Um, typically Mongol flank team game Arabia you don't really see drashing you see scouts so I think this all this may go better for a team 1v1 um, my own pocket not so great like when you need to be supporting both sides you can't really split plumes up otherwise they, they get cleaned up a bit because they're not in mass and uh, they're not quite as fast as knights I don't think to cross sides of the map uh, Mongol, rear Mongol pocket. Wow, that's pretty scary. Slam's playing Mayans against Mongols on the flanks, so Slam will have an advantage there in just general 1v1 sense. Um, I'm doing this in a really haphazard order, I know. We've got Springer's Huns playing flank against Fire's Huns. So that's pretty. Um, if, if, if you ask Spring. What what would you like to have happen in these games? Uh, playing Hun's flank against the Hun's flank of the opponents, that's going to give him the best possible chance to uh, hold his own against Fire here. And you know, in a one v one Hun's Arabia, although Fire would be favourite, Spring could hold his own, take some games. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm hoping that they can uh, give a good showing in this game. Actually, a team one v one. But I am, from their perspective, and from a supporting the underdog perspective, I am a little bit worried about that re at Mongols pocket. Uh, people talking about is Slinger being used in 3v3? Yeah, well, um, the Mayan player in the pocket may choose to sling. That's the other option, of course. Um, if you're going to sling as Mayans in 3v3, then it's easier to do that from the pocket, but his map is fairly open. Uh, it's going to be hard to wall all of this in, but perfectly possible. I mean, if you're determined to sling, you'll find a way, right? Um, but we'll keep an eye on it. This is a weird looking mill. Um, now, I, I have no words. That's, that, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> Less said about that mill, the better. <laughs> Let's see how things are progressing on the right hand side. A little bit too early to see a drush coming out yet. Yeah, we would normally see the barracks being built in about one minute. Um, wow. Did that villager only just go out to wood for Slam? Because Slam always does four, four villagers on wood. Whenever I talk about. Uh, the difference in the builds, like three villages or four villages on wood. Um, I make a habit of mentioning that Slam always does four. 
as I'm doing right now, but it seemed like that villager took eight, had only just gone over there. And that tree's untouched. Uh, I guess we can tell if he's, gonna, if he's got the wood to build the barracks now. And he hasn't. I mean, second lumber camp already. This is... I wonder if he's planning to do man at arms instead. But even so, like, Slam doing three on wood. It's like the apocalypse is happening now. I hope spring isn't too mad after end of the Sahara. I oh, really. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that Tato has trolled him. If anyone saw the Koreans game in Call to Arms, uh, about six months ago now, Tato and his towers. <laughs> but spring is actually gonna drush. Interesting. Um, having a Huns war on the flank here, I'd have backed him to just go standard. Uh, Standard being standard 1v1 play, you know, scouts, archer transition for Huns. I guess, really, with the way things are often played, and especially the way we saw the Arabia 1v1 Invitational, it's perhaps not correct to call it standard anymore, but uh, shall we say classic, traditional style of gameplay from the Huns. But anyway, yeah, Springer is going to go with the Drush, and he will do so against the Drush of Fire, and the two will come together now, but Spring's Scout is AFK somewhere. He's actually lost a unit, so I'm going to assume that's the Scout, and not the Villager. He's also gone in there with what looked like no patrol, I think. Uh, Fire's got some nice hits there. One of his militia is almost down. A little bit of revenge on the Scout. But Slam will do uh, Man at Arms and Archers by the looks of it. He's really a fan of this. I see him doing it so much. He's one of these players that has really embraced the the man at arms craze in 2016. But Kong's coming forward with this tower. This is really nice. Take away two lumber camps, pretty much. I guess it may not quite hit the side of the forest. It'd be really nice if it was there. I think because it would definitely hit those vills. Um, but good play by Kong here. Unfortunately, he's taking a fight against Man at Arms with those un Dark Age militia. But, you know, he's killed all but one of the Man at Arms and. What am I talking about? Have I just got the colours completely the wrong way around? <laughs> Did Slam actually do the Man at Arms upgrade? Man, I'm having an absolute facepalm moment now. I told you I was tired and it was late. The, the purple militia were slams. Okay, if I just said something that made absolutely no sense to do with man at arms, then uh, please ignore me. But yeah, slams still nonetheless. He's making the infantry line and doing archers as well. So it's more or less the same type of play that I was talking about. <laughs> Feel free to tell do the fail fishers in the chat. Riot doing scouts from pocket as Mongols. That's interesting. It looks like River uh, is going to go with the plumes approach rather than the sling approach. Obviously, we see no walls from him. Um, he hasn't really managed to get many of the villagers within those walls on the stone, though. So that's going to make leave him struggling to get a castle up, to be honest, if he manages to get to the castle age. And, uh, yeah, it's um, what's happening to him. I guess he's forwarding, isn't he? And it's not going too well. <laughs> I've just seen the yellow dots on the minimap against the teal. They were quite well camouflaged. Um, he's been sealed out by Riet. The scouts are hitting him at home. I was looking at this economy and I was thinking, he's not FC. He doesn't have enough village on to go. It can't be FC plumes. Man. Please give me a break for, the, for being really late and tired. I'm not uh, reacting very quickly, am I? But here we go. Um... River's not really damaging Riot with this. Uh, his resources are pretty much entirely safe at this point. Uh, Lumber Camp in the back. It's not being denied access to gold or anything like that. Slam is even here with uh, some archers to help clean up the forward by River. And Where's River's archery range if he has one? Does he have one? Let's... No, not at this point. Only barracks 
uh, plus towers, so it's pretty much full trash with a few spearmen and such like against Riot, who is unperturbed by it. Meanwhile, Spring had gone forward against Fire as well, with one tower being kind of trapped in there. The village is actually on top of the tower, um, standing on the same tile, which is a little bit of a glitch. Um, his villagers are going to go down as well. And Fire will reclaim his main gold and be able to take that safely. He's only got he's got four villagers standing at the base. Actually, one more popped out for spring, but that one's going to go down. But he's killed one of Fire's at least. How many villagers have they got? Thirty-one versus thirty-two. A pretty pretty similar, but Spring's about to. No, they both went down there. He's two behind. Three behind there. Hard to keep track on all the the dots running around the map because everybody's forwarding. It looks like the the team one v one did just decide. You know what? Let's yolo. Let's triple forward. River's still not really getting into Riot's base. I tried to find an opening on the Oasis, but uh. No can do really. I, it might still be an open. Now that those two tiles are touching, I think. Even yeah, with the, the hill, they're definitely touching. So no way in for River. He's really not hurting Riot right now. And his economy, as we've seen previously, was an utter shambles. And the scouts are still hitting him. The fearsome Riot scouts. I told a story before when I was streaming about somebody who was like, ah, oh, those are only scouts. And then the guy was like. I think it was in response to someone making spears, and he was like, no, they're Riot Scouts. And those Riot Scouts are doing the damage, that, that's for sure. Two Archer Rangers coming up forward for River, but, you know, he's not going to break in for a long time yet. This is all solidly walled up, no Palisades in sight. Yeah, definitely not a hole. Kong Scouts are in, though. Interesting. Um, let's just see if Kong was applying any more pressure to Slam. Not really. Slam instead is actually just cleaning up Kong. Look at this, this is desolation and destruction. <laughs> oh dear. Where's your economy going, Kong? I know you've got three scouts, five scouts even, <laughs> in Riot space, but uh, things are looking bad at home. Fire reaches the castle age, the first player to do so at 90 minutes and 58 seconds. And it's been that kind of game, hasn't it? Messy, but um, Tyrant's firmly on top. I mean, score difference is telling at this stage for a 340 difference to and ever increasing to open up between the two teams. Uh, when the scores are all like 1.5k it's pretty massive and um, Spring is about to lose a lot at home. Fire is there with 8 crossbows only plus 1 done but he'll get Bogkin soon and he's in a position on the top of that hill to really micro against that army uh, pull back, abuse the extra range, pick off Vils and Spring is going to have to work hard to clear all that up. Let's look at Spring's point of view. He's uh, almost at the castle age, actually. He can afford to upgrade his units. Um, potentially not crossbow and bobkin. We'll see. But he's losing, losing, losing all the time. Losing army, losing villagers. Uh, right now, he's 13 population behind his direct opponent, Fire. And... That's just going to continue to mount up. Fire is now uh, microing his heart out, and Spring is just, you know, I'm, I'm tapping out of this one. GG. And there we go. <laughs> um, he was in a state, wasn't he? River, likewise. This was about to be crossbows. Actually, you know, Slam's only about a third of the way to the Castle Age, but nonetheless, that would just depopulate River. And Kong, well, we saw what happened there. Um, so the triple forward tactic didn't really pay off for um, first team 1v1 and Rivers forward being cleaned up by Knights as well as Riot was the second player to reach the castle age. Interesting game. At least What I can say about that is at least team 1v1 tried something. 
you know, they're not going to beat Tyrant on Arabia by playing standard, so they just went triple forward, make it like three 1v1s and see what they can do. So, kudos to them. But, ultimately, it's going to prove difficult, isn't it? This is Tyrant we're talking about. Oh, sorry for not updating the score in the uh, second game. It's 2-0 now. So we're going to have Tyrant home map. So um, almost certainly Arabia unless they're bored of it. Uh, and then I guess Team 1v1 will pick Arabia in game 4 as well. Um, so we could have quadruple Arabia. Oh, no, you can't, can you? You have to pick something different in game 4. To your home map or to either team's home map but yeah a little bit of a delay while they decide on the map spring is asking tyrant so music back on again for a little while and we'll be in game three in a bit
Right, um, yeah, I was just about to say that they beat me to the punch. This was a restart, I was sure of it, so I wasn't going to really say much until I, we got past the four minute mark if we did, but the spectator delay aborted, so it was pretty obvious that it was a restart. But doubt is here, um, and unfortunately as a result of that, we will have to go in there and uh, redo the whole spectator delay. So they should launch fast, so I guess we'll be in the game in two to three minutes of real time. So see you then, basically.